You're listening to Bizarre Buffet, a podcast of all-you-can-eat weird. I'm your host, Mark Toriello. I'm Jen Wilson. And I'm Mark Blustein. There'll be food and drink and ghosts. And perhaps even a few murders. You're all in private. When we first went in, one of the people said, Who are you? And Tex said, I'm the devil, and I'm here to do the devil's business. Hey, Bizarre Buffet listeners. Hey everyone! Can I get a Hoya? Hoya! Hoya. <laughs> Jen just introduced us to this new craze that all the kids are doing on, on the, TikTok. The yeah, TikTok. On the people TikTok-y. will be like, "Can I get a Hoya?" And then they're like, "Hoya!" <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, oh my yeah. god, that oh, is so porno, so gross." And, they're doing and it like, in just like, imagine having like knowing little children that do it. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. It's so weird. And I'm like, do you realize you sound like a porn star? <laughs> like, do you? Yeah, I know. Like, they're, listen, they're you're doing get... it in like targets and yeah. Like, but I mean, libraries. like, we also should give a hoya yeah, because this is episode 50 of the Zarba oh, Hoya. Yeah. We've come a long way. Wait, wait, is this going to be 50? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, we're over the hill. I know. We really have come a long way, though. <laughs> we have. From being yeah, on our phone. Yeah. But for all of you who've been with us since episode one, thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Really? Cheers. This is to us. This is to us. <laughs> so to us. And to you. And to you. Come I sit mean, on my lap. We're going to talk. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So um, we're coming to sit on Mark Toriel's lap tonight. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do some horny ASMR, too. Well, speaking of... Ooh. Well, speaking of laps, it makes me think of, like, Santa Claus when you sit on his lap at the mall. <sighs> Oh my God, Mark Bluestein and I are great oh mall companions. We are. We <laughs> love going to the mall together. Oh, we do. We get in a lot of trouble. It's a New Jersey thing. We do. I know. While we're talking about malls, I would like to know what everyone's favorite mall store is or was. I was always a big fan. Fucking Sam Horny Goody. I love Sam Goody. Sam Goody. Uh, I used mm -hmm. to always get CDs from Sam Goody. What CD did you get at Sam Goody? Can you think of one? I remember like buying O Town. Oh, that makes total sense. Yeah. That's absolutely accurate. They Mm -hmm. probably had like a display for it too. I used to love, I mean, not anymore, but like I was a huge fan of Claire's. Like when they used to have like the Spice Girls and NSYNC and like Backstreet Boy (laughs) memorabilia. Yeah. I had a land. Bass <laughs> necklace because he was my favorite from NSYNC and then he oh. wound up being gay. Yeah. Oh, he's on our side. He's, on, our he's side. on your side. But we don't even want him. I had so. like a Lance Bass pillowcase. Like I was obsessed with Lance Bass. Oh. So horny for Lance. Well, I, I love like it. Most of the girls were not into him. No, he didn't get a lot then, of airtime. No. But then once I found out. You know, the team that he, he pitched for, I was yeah. like, JT all the way. JT, you were like, I've moved on. I moved on to Justin Timberlake. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Listen, if Britney Spears could get it, you're definitely fine. But it's like, yeah. I miss Clara's from the 90s. I yeah. miss that type it's of a like. nostalgia thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Now you go in and it's just blah costume jewelry. Yeah. Like for it used boring to be. tweens. Mm-hmm. It was like, I remember it being very like hot pink. Lots of hot pink, lots yeah. of flowers. Lots of lance. Like, lots of lance. Lots of whatever the Olsen twins were wearing back then with, like, the bucket hats and, like, oh, oh. the sunglasses with the <laughs> little, like... I love a bucket hat. The bucket hats with, like, the sunglasses that were heart-shaped and then had, like, a little oh. heart and rhinestone. Oh, yeah, the little oh my rhinestone God. thing. Babysitters oh, club me to yes. death. Yes. Oh, my oh, God. Like, so I was a straight-up Claire's kid. Actually, my cartilage that I have pierced. From Claire's? Oh. From Claire's back in the day. Oh, I had my ear pierced at Claire's. And, uh, I think I did, too. It never was infected. Yeah. Well, oh. that you know what? Considering, that's pretty good. Yeah. Shocking. And ah. she bitch fucking did it with a gun. Not even, oh, I you know. one of the piercing Oh, guns. my God. Which is, like, a, a real piercer's, like... No, no. Like, oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it makes it easier. It probably... Well, yeah. it, it's, like, mass consumption like piercing what? it's like mm. here you want to fucking study your ear oh it's an ear everyone needs to chill i know well everybody's a fucking elitist snob these days but what about you mark well i really loved sam goody because 
they had the VHS tapes oh, yeah. and, and they Sun had the Coast neon videos. lights. Suncoast video. That's, that's Sun Coast. Cousin Doug. That was his first job. <gasps> oh, cool. oh my God! Call Cousin Doug. Yeah, no, <laughs> we, kidding. We love a good Suncoast. Well, Suncoast we, we was my favorite because they had such a uh, plethora of horror movies. And it was always, like, the obscure shit. So not only would they have, like, the popular franchises, but they would have Faces of Death or, like, House mm. Part 2 yeah. or Ghoulies 4. Ghoulies go to college. Ghoulies go to college. Ghoulies go to space. So I always appreciated Suncoast mm. because they had, you know, really cool horror stuff. Yeah. Ghoulies doing porn. Oh, yeah. Uh, I oh, yeah. <laughs> All the ghoulies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mark, where are we going tonight? We're going to the mall. Ah, <gasps> oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're also going a little bit back in time, uh, starting to uh, 1999. Oh, yes. That's like the Suncoast video. Yeah, Sam episode. Goody, Fucking Claire. All like of when it. We were on the pulse of DVD. Oh, oh my, my God, God. We were. New Millennium. So let's go so to, horny. not only are we going into 1999, but we're going to Rhode Island. Never, what are we doing in Rhode yeah, Island? Yeah, what are we doing in okay. Rhode Island? Why are we here? All in right. 1999. Yeah. We're in Rhode Island. We're in Rhode Island. All right, Fuck so. <laughs> playing let's, some uh, Alanis Morissette in our car on the way there. Yes. When I think of 99, I think of like bad new millennium. Yeah. But, like some Britney Spears shit. Yeah. yeah. Like a metallic body con crop top. Hot. That's what hot. I think. Hot. 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 A bucket hat, too. I'd be wearing yeah. a bucket hat. I love that. With my, like, little heart-shaped sunglasses with the rhinestone yes. hearts. What would you be wearing? I would be wearing something really slutty for me. I'm slut positive. I am <laughs> I am a sex positive person. I would be wearing something very post-punk-y. And what would you be wearing, Mark? Um, Revamped for I the 90s. I hated the 90s, so... I don't think I'd be wearing anything. He'd be a nudist. You'd be a yeah. nudist. I'd be a naked and person. we would be yeah. driving in like a Volvo. Oh my God. Fucking Swedish some, Volvo. Like, the thong song. Oh that my. was like Cisco. Cisco. Oh, God. Oh, TLC No Scrub. Um, yeah. R. Kelly. R. Ke- <laughs> a plethora of bad music. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> Fucking R. Mm. <laughs> Hashtag controversial Kelly. <laughs> R. Kelly has nothing to do with this mall. So let's talk about what's going on in the world at this time. Okay. Okay. So it's the late 90s, and it was a popular time. There was blowjobs in the White House. There was blowjobs in the White House. Hot. There was PP on R. Kelly. Oh, my God. There was, there was oh. um, busted knees from figure skaters. Oh, that's right. There Tanya. Was a lot of bucket hats and oh, yes. Jen wants her bucket hats. I, I want a bucket oh. hat. Someone send Jen a bucket hat now. My birthday is coming up in a couple weeks. That's right. November 8th. Remember, P.O. Box Jen Wilson bucket hat. Bucket hat palooza. And yeah. you, can, you can throw in a uh, heart shaped sunglasses uh, with yeah. the rhinestones. If you can find it. If you can find them. A bucket hat might be easier. I don't know. And during this time, we're, we were also on the cusp of the new millennium. Y2K. Y2K. Yeah. Where everyone thought the world was going to end. Yeah. Did Backstreet Boys have an album called The Millennium? They did. That had, one. I want it that way. Tell me why ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. I'm sorry. I'm just the harmonizer here. I'm not the lyricist. So, yeah, we were, like, on the cusp of this whole new millennium Yeah, jazz. the Backstreet. That was oh. a really good album, though. That was probably one of their best albums. No strings attached. That's insane. No, that was the other one. <laughs> With the marionettes. Yes, yeah. Bye, Never, bye, bye. Yeah, that's right. Never mind. Sorry. So, Never mind. A 90s so, album. So we were, <laughs> like, in the cusp of the new millennium and a plethora of horrendous music and yeah, bucket and hats. And- <laughs> And let's face it, you know, at this time, a lot of malls started to look dated because Mm. malls had this huge resurgence in the United States, kind of in like the 1970s, 1980s. So a lot of these malls had these really cool aesthetics that were kind of no longer being appreciated and looked at as dated, Mm -hmm. especially now we're going into Y2K, a more digital, you know, future forward aesthetic. 
So a lot fuck of malls, that. yeah, fuck, fuck that. that shit. And now a lot of malls were like, okay, like we have to modernize our malls. So they started to expand them. They put glass facades on them, making it look a little bit cleaner. And it's funny now because a lot of these malls that were renovated in this time were looking at it and were like, wow, that shit looks dated. Yeah. Yeah. And overall, like the whole mall culture at this time was really forced to have to keep up mm. so it wouldn't become a dead mall. This started to happen and in Providence, Rhode Island, the Providence Place Mall was just being built. And Jen Wilson was showing up in her bucket hat. <laughs> she was like, I'm she, here for the unveiling. She was there for Claire's. <laughs> for Claire's. No, icing. Was that the, the other icing? icing that was, was the, the other, other Claire's, one. yeah. Wow. So this mall was brand new. It had 1.4 million square feet with 160 stores. Wait, how many square feet? 1.4 million square feet. Oh, fuck. I don't. It's, pretty big. it's a huge ass mall. Yeah, that's it's a mega yeah. Mall. That, I'm sorry, the number was just more like excuse me. Yeah, yeah that's... it's multiple floors, wings. Wow. I okay. mean, continue. Oh, sorry, yeah. they had. They even had like a movie theater too, and those are pretty big. That's wow. like a that's a thing now in the malls. A movie mm. theater. You have to have a movie theater. Yeah, the mall. yeah. For delinquents. Yeah, for delinquents to hang out in front of for yeah. their parents to pick them up and to make out with their 13 year old yeah. uh, counterpart. Yes. So, um, I mean, this mall was also so big that there was like an Amtrak train line that kind of ran under it. Oh, wow. So it was kind of like an underground type of train? No, it was... Or was like the an actual Amtrak that went underneath? Like an actual Amtrak. Like the tunnel went, went under the mall? Oh, I shit. think so, okay. yeah. Like the train went under the was mall. Was there a stop at the mall? That would be cool. Oh, I don't know. That's in Philly, the... the the mall in Philly called the Gallery. Mm -hmm. There was a train stop there that okay. let you off in the mall. Well, I know even at a uh, Jersey City, there was like a path train stop at Newport, and mm. I think there's the Newport Mall. Oh, okay. So it could be a thing. There was a river too. It's called like the Woonus Nantucket River. The and Woonus, Woonus Nantucket. <sighs> I hope I didn't slaughter the name, but it goes under the mall too. Apparently, it cost five hundred million dollars to make this mall. Okay. It was basically designed as a mega shopping destination to help stimulate the city's economy. Okay. Um, so it's not like a terrible thing. It's just no. very no. large. Yeah. This is where things get a little bit more interesting. So I wonder if Titanic was playing at the movies there. Oh, well, oh it my was God. 1999. Oh, oh but it was being built in 99. Uh, oh, yeah. damn it. So oh. Titanic was out just... Not Maybe it was mall. like on the two dollar Tuesday mall things Maybe, that they used to do. Too so, bad Jen Wilson couldn't go in her bucket hat to go see it. I know the premiere with Billy Zane. <laughs> with Billy Zane, <laughs> they should make a Titanic bucket hat for Jen. <laughs> I bet they're. I bet they exist. Mm -hmm. It I'm has sure. to have Leo's face on yeah. it. Yeah. During the time of the construction, there was a local artist and city resident and his name was michael townsend why does that name ring a bell i don't know like it's funny because when i was doing the research and i saw the name it, it well there's b like townsend from the who <laughs> no but i feel i know like i feel like i've heard the name michael townsend before it sounds like a very like common combination or townsend ha is a yeah. common last name. Yeah. I've heard it many a time. <laughs> Mr. Michael Townsend. Hey, Mike. He hey, used, Mike. Hey, if you're still hey, alive. Michael. I actually emailed him. Oh. oh. Did he respond? He did. I asked him to be on the show. Was he like, absolutely not? It, well, no, he seemed very polite about it. He declined. We can talk about why he probably declined after. Why would someone want to decline from such a classy... We are a very fine Show. establishment. We're a very beautiful group of people. We are. During the time of the construction, this guy, Michael Townsend, he used to go out jogging and, you know, for exercise, and he would jog past the construction site of the mall. Okay. So on his runs, he would notice something a little bit unusual about the construction of this building every time he would pass by. To the point where it kind of stood out to him. Right by the river where the mall was, there was like these two large walls that kind of looked awkward and they did not touch. Okay. So it kind of created this gap. I guess he would pass by it and be like, oh, well, that looks like uh, weird. 
yeah anomaly or just like a fuck up yeah like what's <laughs> going on over here he thought to himself he's like well what the hell could possibly go in there because it's too narrow to be a parking garage the spacing doesn't make sense for it to be a store like right. whatever so he was just he chalked it up to probably just bad construction yeah or some sort of design accident now it was something that he did notice but it didn't really come into play until four years later Okay. So now we're in 2003. World did not end. The world did not end. Y2K was over. Still shitty music. Yeah, Still definitely. awful music. Some really shitty fashion trends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They just got worse. Like they the got worse. Like the fucking, like... Ugg boots with fucking... Boots with the fur, apple yeah. bottom yeah. jeans. And, and then, shit. like, people wearing... Like, I think the girls did this thing where they would wear, like, five tank tops at the yeah. same time. Mm-hmm. Ugh, for what? I hated that. It, like, made my armpits sweat just thinking about all those layers. <laughs> After, like, the success of the mall, developers wanted to really continue to build up the city. They were like, holy shit, we made this big mall. It's stimulating the economy. Mm-hmm. Let's push it further. So... <sighs> Push it, push it, push it, push it real good. So That's they, back to the 90s. They did push it real good. The developers, <laughs> they wanted to build more retail spaces. So after touring the city... There better be a Claire's there. Better be. I, there might be at that mall. After they toured the city, they saw this area, and it was called the Historical Mill District. And it was kind of like an industrial area. And they were like, okay, like this can be rebuilt. This could be rejuvenated. Mm-hmm. Like, what can we do with this? Unfortunately, that meant that a lot of artists that were living in those spaces were kind of forced out. And that included Michael Townsend himself. Aww. Now, at the time, he Michael. Was, I know. I know. It's it's unfortunate. They want to gentrify places and then have local artists go there. But now they're pushing out local artists. So yeah. it's like right. this double, well. you know, cacophony. So, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of the artists were kicked out. He was part of this, like, artist community called Fort Thunder, and they lived and resided in the mill district. So for two years, the residents fought back. They were like, no, you're not taking away our community. Yeah. They really, they put up a good fight for two years. Unfortunately, they lost. The city developers tore down the, the entire place for the sake of commercial space. What ended up happening is, is that they were forced to leave their homes in the mill district. Fort Thunder was replaced by a parking lot. Oh. Pay paradise to put up a parking lot. Another song that was recovered in the 90s. Yes, I know. I love it. So (laughs) during this time, Michael had been a drawing instructor at the Rhode Island School of Design. She-she. Yeah, he is very she-she. And he was the founder of an art movement called Tape Art. Which what does that mean? They basically made art out of tape all over the city. Oh, that's really cool. That is. So that is really cool. So now, okay, they have been forced out of their artist community. There's all of these like big buildings being built. So like, what's going on? How is all of this connecting in the yeah. bizarre buffet world, right? Yeah. During this time, he came up with this concept called Tremorkind, which translates to Children of the Ruins. Oh, yes, like I. Yeah. Like so, me too. All of us. Me three. In my bucket Mark hat. Mark four. In your bucket bucket hats of the ruin. So Tremor, <laughs> Tremorkin is this art concept project that he put together. So after being displaced, Michael partnered up with seven other artists to create this specific art movement. Okay. Okay. The idea of the art movement was to highlight the amount of livable space that was being sacrificed by these retail developers. So to bring this concept to life, the seven originally planned on living in the Providence Place Mall for just a week. Okay. To do this, they needed to find a space inside of the mall that would not be detected by mall security, which in my profession or world, in my experience, Mall security is the most useless. Yeah. They can't do shit. They can't arrest you. They can't. Yeah, they're like a they're, fucking rent a car. Yeah, yeah. They're exactly. just like Paul Blart. Tales. Paul Blart. Paul Blart calling Paul Blart. Yeah, Leah Remini. They're just tattletales. And then yeah. they and they tell you to call the police. Yeah. That being said, they couldn't live inside of a store. They couldn't live inside a mall bathroom. And they couldn't pitch a tent in the parking garage. Yeah. 
So they really needed to be more creative about how they could accomplish this. After a lot of brainstorming, Michael remembered, oh my God, that weird spot. Yeah. That I used to pass when I would go. Yeah, the little construction zigzag situation. So Michael remembered that weird spot where he used to jog. He was like, you know what? I'm going to check that spot out to see (laughs) if it's still there and what the hell is going on. So the developers never sealed up that spot. So it was still in back there after all of these years. To Michael's discovery, he went deeper into the space and noticed that there was years worth of garbage and debris that the construction company had left behind. Okay. So it was just like, oh, oh, so so, there was a lot of like broken wood bags with zip ties. It was just, I think it was weird. Why would you have zip ties? Tying people up, hog tying. And the, like, space itself was just awkwardly narrow. However, it was pretty big. The measurements was actually 750 square feet, which is about, like, the average size of a one-bedroom apartment. I was going to say, our last place, I think. I miss that place. Our old one-bedroom. It was cute. I drive by it all the time when I go down to... Well, I don't drive past the actual apartment. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, you weird pervert. No. You driving by, you stalking people. No, like kidding. I go past the exit and I'm like, oh, Mark's old place. Mark does that too. And I'm just kind of like, mm-hmm. So Michael realized that, okay, there's like 750 square feet of prime real estate not being used by the mall. So this could potentially be free. Yeah, true. So what did he do with it? He realized like the potential gold mine that they discovered. And they really were like, shit. Let's take our art concept of Tremorkind and really push the envelope. They wanted to look at that space in the same eyes as a developer would. They were like, fuck, how can we turn this space into a livable condo? Oh! Oh. Living there indefinitely. Wow. Oh my God. And still not be detected. They decided to convert this space into an apartment. Whoa. Yeah. Me and my bucket yeah. hat self would have been so happy. Uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm going to put up my poster. With my sunglasses oh, that are in the shape of hearts. With the rhinestones. With the rhinestones. <laughs> how did they do this, right? Yeah, how did they do yeah. it? Believe it or not, they kind of did this in broad daylight in everyone's faces. Could, could people, like, actually see them doing this? Yeah, but they just didn't. Think they it probably was thought they worked there or yeah. something. Okay. First, they had to like haul out all the debris that was inside. Right. So they did that. They would they would basically be taking like all the shit and putting it in their backpacks and like getting all the crap out. Once they emptied out the space, they got power cords, gallons of water, lights, silverware. They just kept bringing shit in there until there was enough stuff for them to live off of. That's awesome. Yeah. And this is where it gets really good to hide the space that they built. They made a fake wall out of, like, cinder blocks. Cool. And then they had acquired this industrial-looking door and installed that to be the front door. That's fucking cool. It blended in with the rest of the mall architecture. Really, it went unnoticed. Just looked like, oh, a service closet for the mall. Yeah, who would think about it? Yeah. The seven artists also used wires to hook up into the mall powering system. So they kind of like hacked into their electricity. Oh, wow. Now they got to use their lamps. They put in a television set for entertainment. There was even a PlayStation. Ooh, oh, PS2? I think yeah, so. Yeah, it would and have been a PS2. The, the gray one. And they played... No, a, that's PS1. Oh, PS2 was PS2 black. PS2 was black. Oh, I had a PS2. Yeah. And they played a lot of Grand Theft Auto. Oh, and I loved mm. the Tony they Hawk did. skateboard they did? games. They did? Oh. Yeah. Wow. So the biggest challenge that they ran into <laughs> with the conceptualization of the secret mall condo was the problem of running water. Okay. To basically get access to water, they would go to the movie theater's bathroom. Like oh. during late night movies, which is kind of gross. It's a little gnarly, but you know what? Whatever you got to do, right? You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. yeah. They even decorated the place. They hauled a china cabinet, a couch, mm. and other various small items. But bringing the furniture pieces was no joke because to access this space, you needed to descend a ladder that was 15 feet tall. What? Yeah. So to get in and out? You would 
open the door to like the secret hallway and you would go down this long narrow hallway and then you would go down 15 oh, feet oh shit and that the 15 feet down i believe is where the apartment was okay so how'd they get the furniture they used the ladder and they kind of just had it descend down the ladder oh yeah but again when they were doing all this shit, no one noticed. They were just like, oh, they're mall employees or, oh, they're servicemen right. or they're, whatever they're doing. When the, the space was finally completed, the artists, they had to make like a blood oath to never tell anyone about this space. So like kind of fight club, right? Like right. The rules, don't talk about fight club. Don't talk about fight club. Don't talk about secret mall condo. Absolutely. So that's the, always rule number one. So now the eight of them were not really like living in it together. What they would do is that they would rotate designated times for each person to live in it to kind of keep the the momentum going. It was so well concealed that they could live there for like months at a time. Okay. You guys might want to know how long did they get to live in this? Well, that was going to be my question. How long did they get away with living here? How long could that possibly last? Yeah. Well, for them, four years. Wow. Four years. Four years. Four years. The secret mall condo was undetected. How did it become detected? All right. Let me tell you that. As the space continued to gain its momentum with the artists, the one day. They walked into their living space and they found that the utility door was kicked down and certain things were stolen, like the PlayStation and some of their art pieces. The artists were kind of baffled because it didn't seem like an ordinary type of break-in. It was an inside artist like an job. Inside job. Yeah, it, it seemed like kind of weird. They were like, well, fuck, we can't call the police because we're living here illegally. And plus the mall cops would do nothing. Yes, yeah. yeah. the mall cops would like call Paul Blart. <laughs> <laughs> so they were like, okay, well, like we don't want to give this up. So what they did is that they had to kind of reconfigure and say, you cannot tell anyone about this condo or this secret mall apartment. So they had to really like reiterate that. But it was clear that someone else knew. There was a snitch. About the space. Goddamn snitch. After this robbery happened, another one of the rules was that you can only go in and out of the secret mall condo at nighttime. So they were like, fuck. That we makes sense. We don't want people seeing us in the daylight. So they got a little bit more strict. On the very last day that the secret mall condo existed... Michael was hosting a visiting artist from Hong Kong who went by the name of Jaffa. He wanted to show her this four year long art project because her being an artist, she was probably getting a kick out of it. Yeah. I thought it was amazing. Exactly. Yeah. So in the middle of the day, he's giving her the tour. Right before they exit the secret mall condo, they were met with a banging on the door and it was mall security. <laughs> Paul and Blart. Paul yeah. fucking Blarty. Are you so, fucking kidding me? Motherfuck. Mall security comes in. They detain him on the spot. What basically had happened the is... The only time they ever did anything. Yeah. Exactly. So what ended up happening Besides was... Besides eating donuts. Yeah. Eating donuts and tattling. <laughs> so what ended up happening was that at the time, the mall hired two new mall security guards. They were the ones that saw the artists go in and out of the space. So the break-in was really more or less mall security going in and investigating. And they wanted to figure out like who's living here and get their like personal information to conduct an investigation. Oh, God. Fucking I know. Paul Blart. Like, get a goddamn Fuck. life. Get a life. But also, like, shame on them. They were undetected for four years. I know. And, and who gives a flying yeah. fuck? It's a space that nobody cared about. They yeah. used it as a garbage dump. It was a garbage dump. Oh, and, God. Fucking, you know, this is the problem with well, rich white America. Well, America doesn't like Minus you if you're homeless yes. or poor, you know? No, yeah. they don't. So Michael gets arrested. He's sent to criminal court over this. Criminal court yeah. over that? For this. He should have and had squatter's rights at that point. Yeah, well, so the mall wanted to file a lawsuit on him. They had this long list of charges, like felony, breaking and entering. What the even, fuck? I guess even like stealing Crazy. electricity, vandalism. Oh, so during this stealing the movie theaters running water yes exactly breathing mall oxygen yeah 
So during the trial, they really like put together a whole like dossier of shit to throw at him. And yeah. <laughs> both hands. Yeah. Uh, all of the dicks. So <laughs> no no dicks were in the condo, unfortunately. Aww. Aww. But, so mm. during the, the trial, you know, the the list went on and on and on of all the things that they wanted to get him on. While they were going on and on, they also made a list of all of the items that were inside of the apartment. Okay. That was very lengthy. They were like dishes, TV, lamps, a hutch, a fucking couch, like clothes or whatever, okay? China cabinet. So that part kept going on and on. The judge ended up going from being like stern and judge-like to kind of getting a kick Mm. out of the entire situation where he was left impressed with the amount of stuff they were able to get (laughs) in to this undetected apartment. I feel like if I was a judge, I would be the same way. Like, just impressed. Like, Like, how did you do it? Like, damn, girl, I want to know the story. (laughs) By the end of it, the judge was so impressed that he declared this to not be a criminal act (laughs) and instead of sentencing him to prison or giving him like a hefty fine he got a little slap on the wrist oh good i'm so glad for trespassing and they sent him on his way (laughs) and i would give the paul blarts a slap on the wrist for being little snitches yeah exactly i would go back to eating your donuts yeah break their fingers fuck yeah So for four years, Michael was able to create a rent-free apartment that flew under the radar. Yes, Michael. It was somehow managed to be built in front of so many people without realizing it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, since then... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. (laughs) We'll get this. The mall ended up banning him from stepping foot on the property. Oh, God. What a shame. What a shame. He got four years of living out of it. Four years of living out of it. He did fine. That's like the biggest yeah. fuck you, I think. It's yeah. like, yeah, well, I fucking lived here rent free. <laughs> yeah. I love how the mall was like, <clears throat> well, you can't come back again. Oh, but wow. The, so the whole thing raises a lot of questions. Like, how do you create your own livable space? I think it's very innovative. Yeah, it is. It's ballsy. It also makes you think when people are making these projects or these developers, like, are they really maximizing the space yeah. or not? Mm-hmm. And yeah. in this case, clearly they were not. I think it's one of those things where if there is enough funding, and doesn't matter who it's from, I mean, how many times did the American shit dream mall here mm-hmm. that Mark well, and Jen it know? it was like Xanadu and then... Xanadu. Xanadu. Olivia, yeah. Olivia, <laughs> Olivia Newton-John was going to come and, and then, and then on roller skates. herself on roller skates in the mall. And then the swamp started to eat the mall. Yeah. No, but my point is, I mean, how many times did that place exchange ownership and oh, hands? So a lot. Clearly. And there it, were squatters in there, too. I'm sure there yeah. were. I they mean, found, like, human feces and shit in there. <laughs> can find some human feces in so, here, too. So since then, Michael has done other installations. Okay. Kind of similar. One of the things that he did is that he made an installation. It's called Tunnel. What it is, is there is like a draining tunnel that looks Mm -hmm. like it goes under a railroad or something Mm -hmm. like that. Or like a sewage thing. He has floating mannequins stuck in a spider web like structure. So you go into this random underground tunnel and then you're encountering a web of floating mannequins cool that's awesome i really like that that a lot so he does a lot of things like that i think now he probably has a more calm life yeah i don't know he you know kindly got back to me yeah on email but well uh thanks for that for legal reasons he can't talk about it you You know what i like i really I really admire him for being able to do that. Yeah, yeah that's you know? fucking cool. Like, that's fucking awesome. I know. Jen, we're all going to go, and we're going to find some place where we can do that. And I'm going to wear a bucket hat. And Jen's going to wear her goddamn motherfucking bucket hat one way or another. With my heart-shaped sunglasses with the rhinestones. And I'm going to manage a Sam Goody. Oh, you are. Oh, my God. That's so hot. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So this that concludes was, Secret Mall oh, This condo. was great. Thank you. I love it. I just wish they had a Secret Mall Santa that was in some sexy mm-hmm. situation there. Yeah. Or like, like have like some weird immersive like 
underground Christmas experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll make our With, our like, project some, like, that. Like killer elves, like like <gasps> fucking like demon elves. Oompa Chuckies. Oh, Chucky. Yeah. Oompa Loompas Chucky. on fucking level twenty. Yep. Thank you for this immersive yeah, experience. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, um, and Michael Townsend, like, you're fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah you're really cool, dude. And um, whenever your cease and desist order is up, let us know. We'll talk to you. Yeah. We'll go shop together. Yeah, we'll go okay. shop. We'll go find a place. In New Jersey, I don't know where you live, but there's plenty of malls. Yeah. We'll just have to stop at Claire's, though. Yeah, well, and Jen, so help me God, she needs her bucket hat. Yeah. I was going to say that, you know, with my birthday coming up. Oh, yes. How can people reach out to me to give me mm. bucket hat? You if, can message me on Instagram at Bizarre Buffet to get my address. Absolutely. In care of bucket hat. In, in care, care of Jen Wilson. <laughs> You can also reach out to us on Facebook at Bizarre Buffet on Twitter. Yeah, hell yeah. If Instagram. you want to give us some money, patreon.com. Slash Bizarre Buffet. It and helps a lot. What? Just remember that if you can't afford to do anything monetarily, we do understand that, of course. But what you could do is go on Apple slash iTunes and leave a positive. A positive, a positive not a negative. Yes, a positive no review. Negative. That's right. Because the negative review... Of the one, of the one star, thank you to whoever left that. Um, does not help. So thank you, thank you. We and, love you. We go, love the haters too. We do. We love our haters. Keep so, it up. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Until next time. Until next time. My name is Tangina, and I'm the Bucket Hat. The bucket Hat. And I'm Mark Toriello, aka Claire the Boutique. Oh, oh goodbye. <laughs> that's my favorite. Bye. Bye.